Have you ever wondered why video game characters are designed or portrayed the way that they are? Like how most male characters are portrayed as strong, muscular, and badass white men, while the women on the other hand are young and beautiful who wore little clothing that showed off their bodies a bit too much. The inclusion of sexual designs is not something new in the video game industry. In fact, women have always been portrayed more sexually than their male counterpart. Their body movements and proportions were always exaggerated. They wore lesser clothing or no clothing at all. And assets were emphasized through camera angles. In other words, they were being overly sexualized or objectified. But why? That's because video game design and aesthetic are primarily meant to appeal to the male audience. The industry's main demographic as fan service or for viewing pleasure. Now this is where the problem with oversexualization comes in. Although most games that do contain overly sexualized content are meant for older audiences, some games accidentally find their way on the hands of much younger audiences, due to different reasons. Have wondered why video game characters are designed or they are? Like how most male characters are proskiller and badass white men, while the women are unaware of the possible consequences it could have on their child. Exposure to sexualized or explicit content has negative effects in a variety of domains, including cognitive and emotional consequences, physical and mental health, and even sexual development. Exposure to over-sexualized images can also encourage sexual curiosity and sexual preoccupation on young males, while make young females feel inferior and distressed. Video games, like any other medium, have the power to influence a person's behaviors and beliefs because of how immersive the video game world is, making it harder for younger audiences to separate fantasy from reality. But how would you know if the game is safe for your child or not? One way is to look for the ESRB rating on the game packaging or any description that indicates the age rating that is more appropriate for the child. Second, look for content descriptors that indicate if the game may contain any concerning content. Third, look for interactive elements. It informs about the interactive specs of the product, for example, the user's ability to interact. Other ways are as simple as looking at game review sites, watching gameplays or trailers, and even playing the game yourself because in the end, you're still the parent and it's still your choice if you deem the game appropriate or not. If you want to learn more about the topic and the effects, visit this website.